Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greta and I have a really fun video for you today. Now that it's fall, temperatures are getting a little chillier and everyone's kind of reaching for sweeter, stronger fragrances, looking for certain notes, especially with, you know, October, everyone thinking of like pumpkin and caramel. I have a fun video for you of my top fragrances that are caramel prominent. So if you've seen, I did do, let's see, a top chocolate, I did a top vanilla, I did a top black currant, um, tuberose, I think I did one for tobacco. So I'm excited to this time do caramel. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned for that. Okay, everyone, I have here a mix from super cheap to not so cheap to really expensive. You know me. So I'm, I'm actually excited that I have a really good mix here. And I actually have, a, I think, like 12, actually. One of them I don't have, so I'm going to mention that first. The first one is, to me, just a classic that I think everyone should automatically think of. Super affordable. You should be able to find it on discount sites now for like 30 bucks, max 60. I think I've even seen it at Marshall's. I did declutter it, so I don't have it here, but Juicy Couture Gold is just, it screams caramel. I'm going to put a picture of it up for you. The Viva La Juicy Gold Couture. It is a caramel vanilla fragrance. Like caramel is the one defining note I think of. Super sweet, super loud, projection, sillage, all of that. Like you can't beat it for the money if you're looking for a caramel, sweet, girly fragrance, 100%. The next one that I automatically think of and that is super affordable is the ever popular Pink Sugar by Aquilina. Yes, I have this in my collection just because, how can you not? Like, I don't know, there's just something classic about it. This one, everyone thinks of as like a sugar fragrance. To me, it's always been a caramel note. It's definitely more of a caramelized sugar. Oh, heck yeah. It's a um, almost boozy caramel is what I get from this. Like, I don't really get cotton candy from this one so much as this deep caramely, like almost like a rum caramel, which I think is just that combination of the tonka and the sandalwood and even that licorice in there, kind of just that combination makes it like that. It's almost like, it's very bourbon vanilla to me. Very bourbon vanilla. It's not like your cotton candy, which I happen to like better, but you can't go wrong. What is this like $12 for a gallon? Like it doesn't get cheaper than this. You can even get bundles. You can get this everywhere from the pharmacy to a discount site. Easiest thing to get your hands on. Doesn't matter how old you are. This one always works. This next one actually kind of gave me this idea for the video of a note to focus on because it's a prominent note in here that I enjoy. And that's Minuet et Demi by Fragrance Dubois. This one is, I would say, defined by, oh, that's good, this like spicy, peppery, cardamom note that does stick around, contrasted by this sweet caramel, and then kind of cut by coffee is how it goes. And those notes stay. I think that coffee note kind of gets more pronounced and then kind of wanes a little bit. But I do love that caramel note that keeps this gourmand, this fragrance. Um, I did compare this a lot to Luna Feline as being similar kind of notes, but a very different feel to it. Even though Luna Feline doesn't have caramel in it, it has this vanilla in there that has this caramelized kind of feel to it. But I really like this one. And as it sat on my shelf, that caramel came out more pronounced and as well as the coffee became more pronounced, just sitting and resting on my shelf and just kind of macerating made a huge difference in this one. And it definitely gained a little steam by sitting there. So I highly recommend this one too. 
another house that I absolutely love. Then we have Dior. How can I not mention a Dior in here? This one I do have just a smaller size is the Fieve Delicios. I do find the Dior's to sit. Oh, I got like a blast of baby powder. I do find the Dior's to sit a little closer to your skin. These are not beasts, any of them. This one is like a vanilla amber, but lighter. It's not, usually when you hear amber, you kind of feel, you know, you, I think full bodied and a little bit more aggressive. This is not, I mean, for a Dior, sure. But in general, like I said, Dior's tend to be a little lighter in the longevity, certainly lighter in the projection. They're just designed to sit closer to you. This one's like a vanilla amber caramel with spices in it. There is like a cherry note in here, which cherry and almond kind of like dance this line. Like I feel like there's cherry, almond, vanilla on this spectrum and those notes can kind of be used where like almond can deepen up a vanilla scent and almond is also used to create a cherry scent. It just gets like sharper where this is almost like a cherry almond in there, along with that caramel, vanilla, amber spiciness. This is really good. This is actually truly gourmand. This one doesn't have the best longevity on me, which is why I don't really wear it too often. I get frustrated, I smell it, I fall in love with it, but you know, it's on my skin and I'm in love. And like two hours later, I'm like, where did you go, lover? Where are you? And then I'm chasing it and I don't like chasing lovers, you know, not my style, but I chase this one and that frustrates me, but it's a great caramel note if you want something more demure. The next one is another popular classic. Can I forget it? Is Zero Joff's Casamirati Lira. Very popular, very mass appealing, very easy blind buy. Um, This one is definitely gourmand, has that cookie kind of feel to it. I always consider this kind of like a lemon caramel cake. So you have that like citrus, citrus is more on the top, this like lemony kind of feel to it with that vanilla cake and caramel. This one is, yeah, super popular, easy to wear. I keep a decant of this um, in my purse because it's an easy one to pop on if my fragrance has gone away, it's no longer on me, I, or I like flew out of the house, God forbid, without fragrance on. It's one of them that I will just easily put on. I know it can go anywhere, anytime. And it's a fan favorite that I never have to worry about it um, not being welcome by the company I'm keeping. It's very mass appealing. And for Zerjop, this is definitely among the more affordable that you can find, and you can find these again on other sites too. It's been out for a while. So for a Zerjop, you can get this for pretty much designer prices, if you're looking at designer retail, that is. So it's one I highly recommend. The next one is another affordable one. This is designer. This is Lancome's La Nouette. I love this one. You forget how much caramel is in here. This one has more of a sweet, fruity kind of influence to it, but still has that vanilla caramel kind of base. I love the fruits that it opens with. Like you get this pear and the strawberry. The strawberry gets more pronounced on this, but the pear gives it a nice sweet opening. This is just a basket of gourmand. This one dries down, you get, the strawberry kind of stays there. If you compare it to other fragrances, it's really prominent, but you might not notice while wearing it. You'll get like this praline and caramel vanilla, and then it deepens and you get like a coffee incense depth to this fragrance that gives it more of a nighttime kind of feel 
or a cool weather feel, but you have that caramelly kind of vanilla in there too. That gives it that sweetness that I really like. This is a great one to pull out this time of year and is again, really affordable. The next one I have, I absolutely love. I did a house overview on this one. When I did that, this was one of the bottles that I absolutely had to have. I blind bought, I think, two or three bottles along with my travel set to try them all. And then once I did that, I was like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't blind pick my favorites. So I had to go in and buy this again. And that is by Uniki Luxury Crush On Me. This one is, <laughs> oh mercy. I love this one. This one is, I like to call it, patchouli with caramel sauce drizzled over it. This is not like caramel vanilla built in. This is sauce. This is liquid caramel drenching the patchouli. It's so good. It's like mind blowing good. That's literally what you get. I can get into the other nuances, but that's literally what you get is patchouli soaked in caramel sauce. It's a patchouli of a whole other level. Like this is, this is so incredibly gourmand, delicious, edible. You'll want to eat your arm. Really, really good. This is probably, this is probably the best caramel in this mix that I have here. It's a true caramel sauce patchouli. That's phenomenal. I know the U.S. distributor is Beverly Hills Perfumery. He does ship anywhere. He ships to Canada also. And then I know they have other distributors around the world. I don't know where else. I just know for U.S. and Canada. The next one is also super reasonable. And this is your, this is your Frank Olivier Oud and Vanille. And Vanille. This one I got at the Oud store. This is gonna be, you know, your um, Middle Eastern fragrances, wherever you find your Middle Eastern fragrances. They're usually an impression or a clone of another more expensive, popular one. Even though this says Oud Vigny, there's a prominent caramel note in here. This to me is like an Oud, Rose, Vanilla, Caramel kind of fragrance. This one you can get for probably like $40, I think, $40, $50. So again, super affordable, smells way more expensive. And I'm gonna to try to make more of a conscious effort to mix in more of the affordable fragrances along with the super high end that I absolutely love. This one, yeah, you definitely get that, that pink florals or rose in here along with the woods, like, I'm gonna say patchouli, cedar, oud. And that vanilla is super prominent and it pops up like a caramel vanilla. And you get a little bit of muskiness when this dries down, but this is a great fragrance. The next one I have is from one of my absolute favorite houses. You know this, Zerjoff. I have also Le Capital. Some of you can't do Cruz del Sur 2, which is the mango one. For some reason, that one doesn't agree with everyone. You, you have a strong chance of it not agreeing with you, so I say don't blind buy that one. But Le Capital is easier to blind buy. This one's more like strawberry peach caramel. This one is a strawberry peach caramel that as it dries down, develops more of the base notes, which give you that, you know, that Zerjoff DNA of that like vanilla musky feeling, the labdanum that gives it a little bit of texture. I love this one. It definitely has that like caramel vanilla musk to it, but it's a strawberry peach caramel musky yummy fragrance. It does get um, a little bit of the amber comes out to give it some body along with that labdanum gives it a little bit of body. This is a really yummy one. And again, it's safer buy than Cruz del Sur too. The next one is one and it's flanker and they both qualify, but they're both very different. 
So I have, by Byron Parfums, I have Mula Mula and Mula Mula Rouge Extreme. Both of these are have that fruity caramel, but they're very different. So first I have Mula Mula, which is definitely a very vivacious full fragrance that does fill the room it has incredible projection it gives you this opulent kind of feel so it's so funny mula mula is the name because it really does kind of just pump you up a little bit and you definitely get this mix of fruits like maybe strawberries or some red fruits so similar to la capitale i get that strawberry peach caramel in here but it takes a little bit of a different direction. What do I do with that one? This one, it gets grounded differently. There's definitely, again, a vanilla and an oud in here. And there's that benzoin that really kind of gives it that like vibration or like projection away from you. And again, it has a little bit of oud in there. La Capitale, I think, has oud in there too, giving it, again, that longevity and base that just really kind of gives it a little muscle underneath. Where I think La Capitale stays a little fruitier, whereas this goes deeper into the caramel. The Rouge is, is more vibrant and there's almost like, what is this like? Not menthol-y. Rosemary and ginger in there, giving it this more like, the rosemary gives, you know how rosemary can be almost menthol-y like? It has that in here, pretty pronounced. There's ginger too, but it's really that rosemary that I get. So you, it opens with fruits as well, but they're a sweeter fruit. Almost like I get pear kind of sweet in here. But also I like red fruits. And like sharp, like cherry kind of fruits. And then you also have that rosemary in here. And then it dries down and you get again that like vanilla caramel oud kind of base to it coming out. So there's a little bit of similarity with Mula Mula, Mula Mula Rouge, and La Capitale. However, they, they do come across differently when you spray them on your skin, where you can definitely see a contrast in them, worth owning them. But if you like one, you'd like the other because of those common denominators. And then one last one that I cannot forget because it's one of my favorites is by another favorite house of mine, House of Siage is their Whispers of Truth. And you, they've been having really good sales, like 30% site-wide, where you can get this 30% off. I've seen the Signature Collection go on sale even deeper. This is in the Whispers Collection. There's also the flanker to this, which is Whispers of Truth Noir, which is very similar to this with a smokiness. But this classic, you just can't deny. This is so good. And it's so elegant and refined and it booms. This one booms. This one's a beast. This one will last you 12 hours easily, heading into still on your skin more intimately for 24 hours. So there is like this beautiful floralness to it. And then you also have this sweetness. The sweetness is kind of like the sweetness in Baccarat Rouge. This is not a Baccarat Rouge, but that sweetness factor is there. And then you have this floral note, and then you have this citrus aspect, but it's like a fresh citrus, not a like scratchy citrus that just kind of freshens it. So you kind of have like all three of those going on, and it gives you an incredible, incredible sillage. I have been outdoors just cleaning up outdoors. And yes, I wear amazing fragrance no matter what I'm doing, even chores. And I just love circling back, even outdoors, I would circle back and I would catch my sillage. And it was just like, wow, wow, wow. It's a stunner. This one's a stunner. And it has all these extra stones on it. 
giving it this really, I wish you could see the bling that I can see. It um, is not sparkling like it should. There we go. The whole top sparkles. So beautiful. I love this one. It's definitely a favorite of mine. Um, so those are my, I think, 11, 12. I didn't count. My bad. Those are my favorite caramel fragrances from my collection. I'm sure there's more out there. That is just the ones from my collection that I pulled out as prominent when I'm in the mood for like a nice, sweet caramel fragrance. So let me know some of yours because I know there's a ton out there. I mean, my gosh, there's not only 12 fragrances that have a prominent caramel note in there. These are just my suggestions, my ideas. If you're looking for something like that, these are great ones to lean into, um, affordable to luxury. And if you keep watching my videos and still haven't subscribed, you should subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. And again, comment below and I will see you in the next one. Mwah!